the letter of Paul to Timothy how important scripture is, the Bible, reading the Bible, and how that he's talking about Timothy hadn't learned it since he was a kid. Thank God my parents taught me the Bible since I was a kid, and how important for you to be teaching your kids, your grandkids, the Holy Bible. It's so interesting, people think it's boring, but it's not. If you really read it, it, it really can grab your attention and you can really um, read it. One of the problems is though, there are parts that it gets very like rep repetitious, especially genealogy where they repeat one name after another, after another, you know, or one law after one law. But it's still worth it. Uh, last Sunday, when we had the uh, the parish festival, there was a man there, and um, he actually is from uh, Lima, Peru. He lives here, but he says he's read the Bible four times all the way through, and he is on his fifth time through. And I thought, I, I admire you so much for that, because you're taking the time to read the Word of God. As it says, Scripture teaches us it refutes error, it corrects us, and, and that's important because if I say things, people get mad. Oh, Father's telling us that's wrong. But when you read the Bible, it's right from the mouth of Jesus, and it's not so easy to get mad at Jesus. It's like, wow, Jesus says that's wrong. I better take it serious. It's right from God to our hearts when you read scripture. And of course we don't like it, but it gets us on the right road. It gets us to reflect on what is important and what's not important. Huh? So it teaches us to be persistent and it, um, and it helps convert us. That's so important. It also teaches us the importance of prayer. How are we going to know that prayer is so important if we don't read scripture? Like first reading from Exodus where we hear that Moses through prayer, not being down there and fighting the battle, but him praying allowed the battle to be won. We have a huge battle going on today with the devil and evil. I mean every night, especially on Friday, Saturday night, the, I'm woken up a lot over here, all the cars, their wheels squealing away, rushing, noises, it's like, what's going on in the middle of the night, you know, what's going on? We need prayer for our parish, for Phoenix, and the highest form of prayer is the Holy Mass, and you're here to pray this morning, how wonderful that you are here. But also the Mass in Latin has more power against the devil because he hates Latin. The, the uh, exorcist at the Vatican says the devil hates Latin because it's a sacred language to fight against him. So the prayers in Latin are more powerful and always most effective on exorcism. Then we hear that uh, we need to pray constantly, not just at Holy Mass, but all the time. And the greatest way really is just to talk to Jesus all day long. Talk to Mary, talk to the saints. This is October, praying the rosary. It's a simple little thing to do that you get in the habit of doing. It's reading that um, St. Dominic there was an heretic, the Albigensian heretic, and some, I guess, he was preaching, and then this heretic let him put a rosary on him to say it doesn't have, and then when it did, he said he had 20,000 devils in him. And St. Dominic made him say, what is the thing the devil hates worse? And it said, the rosary and Mary. So it's a simple little prayer, and you can do it if you drive. If you drive, you can just pray it while you're driving. Simple little thing. Those simple things we can do all the time. Mother Teresa's nuns, I was with the bishop in the rosary rally last 
Sunday and I saw Mother Teresa's nuns and I know a lot about them and know some of them. And they always pray the rosary. And they, they're, they're, wherever they're walking, whatever, they're always praying the rosary. It's a simple little thing it can do. And we do need the power of prayer behind all um, what's going on for our country, for our world. And as we get close to Halloween, yesterday I was out blessing a house, and it's just a very nice neighborhood. And two of the houses were so decorated with satanic and deathly things, it was horrible. Just tons of, you know, just evil stuff. And we cannot participate. Well, you can, but you're giving in to the devil. And I was thinking, most people think that there's nothing wrong with Halloween. I've had personal experiences about what goes on that night. And I always say a Latin Mass in the evening of Halloween against all the Satanists and all the witches and Wiccan people that do their things. But I was in Mexico. My parents worked with the poor in Mexico for many years. And then, then I have their house now. And I was there on Halloween one time, which is very rare. And there was a campground with cabins right next to their house. And anyway, all night long, these Satanists were chanting and screaming. It was the most horrible thing I've ever experienced in my life. And as soon as light came, the slightest light, they stopped. And I was so, it was such a relief. Also, sad to say, I, when we have those priest retreats with our bishops at a retreat house in California, and I was in praying before the Blessed Sacrament, and a group of people came in, and sad to say, there was a priest, a real liberal priest, a woman I knew who used to work in youth ministry, and then they had an ecumenical thing of all these ministers and uh, people, and they had a Wiccan witch leading them in a guided meditation. And she started and she goes, Halloween is the day when we witches burn away all that's old like that. It was so horrible. I went and told our bishop, told people that they were doing that in front of the best of sacrament. And anyway, but why do we want to participate anyway with death, sin? It's not it, the devil. It's not prayer. It's an evil night. And just look. Look around. Look at the decorations on the houses. Why do you want to introduce your kids into what scary, satanic, evil death? Why? Well, it's fun. So the devil goes like, you know, I'll give you candy. I'll give you scary stuff. I'll give you fun. If you just, I'll, I'll buy your soul. That simple. Introducing the children. It is a beautiful thing that children can go knocking from door to door asking for candy and people are nice and give candy. That's a nice thing. But the thing is that there's introduced into this evil thing. What can you do? One thing you can do, just have children over to your house. Make a nice, it's the All Hallow Eve preparing. That's the night before All Saints Day. You can have a little All Saints Day all evening before and have a little party with them and give them tons and tons of candy and tell them, okay, if you want candy to rot your teeth and get you all hyper, that's fine. Get your parents to buy you tons of candy, you can do that. But don't go out trick-or-treating. And the other thing you can do is, say, take a statue of Our Lady or Jesus or something, put some nice candles, these little candles by it, and give out holy cards to the people or something. It may have a difference, you know, so that people can notice the difference between the satanic, scary, horrible stuff or the um, what is truly beautiful and good that comes from God. Those are some things you can do. At the end of the scripture, Jesus says, but when the Son of Man comes, and he will come back again, judge me, judge you, to end all this, will he find any faith on earth? As you know, more and very few of our family members go to church anymore. People are becoming more and more 
away from God, atheist, agnostic, and all this. Yes, the faith is dying. Sad to say. And we need to be those people who do have faith and share it with others. But it is going, you know, it's getting less and less and less faith. And I'm sure you've noticed it. If you haven't noticed it, you haven't seen what's going on. So we have to pray. Again, simple thing to remember too on prayer, you've heard I'm sure before, it's called Acts. Simple to say, you know, the Acts of the Apostle, Acts. You first adore God in prayer. You adore Him because He's God, He made you. He gives us everything. He gives us air today, food today, sun, love, family, everything. So we adore Him. And he offers us eternal life after we die, if we obey Him. So we adore Him, and then we are sorry. So we say in a prayer of sorrow, I'm sorry. The act of contrition is a prayer of sorrow. Prayer of thanks, T. Thanking Him for all that He does. He does so much and we don't know it, as you parents and grandparents know. You do so much for your kids and grandkids and they don't even thank you. It doesn't feel good. God's way less appreciated. So a little thanks, he appreciates so much. And then, finally, you go to your needs, and we all have needs from our hearts. When I, and God really does listen to my prayer when I pray deeply from my heart. So God, this is really bothering me. I really need your help really and really believing he's there in the Blessed Sacrament. Before the Blessed Sacrament. I go before the Blessed Sacrament a lot, every day, and all of you should, and you come and you really, really pour out your heart to him, and he will help you with your problems. This morning, if you have problems, this morning, pour it out. And also, it's important that we know what problems each other have so we can pray for others, not just for ourselves. There's so much we're like, God help me, God help me, God help me. And that's good, that's fine. But how about God helping the other people? And maybe you're one of those, because it says, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That means if you really are a holy person, your prayers have powerful effects. So you need to be praying for the other people. So on, as we prepare, it's a little ways away, but for Halloween that night, you pray. Pray against all the Satanists and the witches and all the evil that's going to happen that night. You be the powerful prayer people that God needs. And find out what your friends and what your family need. And pray for them. And be consistent. Keep on praying. Just because you don't get it right away doesn't mean that God's not going to do it. God does say different things. He can say, you ask him something and he can say, no, not good for you. I'm not going to give it to you. Say, why doesn't God answer my prayer? He's going, no, it's not good for you. Or he can say, wait. Or he'll say, yes, right away. I'll do it right away. We're so blessed to have the Holy Bible. We're so blessed to have the Blessed Sacrament. We're so blessed to have Mass. That's another thing you can do is go to Mass every day. You can go to Mass every day. That's the most powerful prayer there is. That works. Nine days, novenas are very great, important ways of praying too. You say, why do I have to do a novena? It's that showing God, I really am serious about this prayer and I will do it nine days in a row or nine hours in a row or nine months in a row and that consistency shows God you're really serious and novenas work they really do work nine days or nine hours nine months these things really or nine weeks really work uh, because it's that consistency it's praying 
In order to pray, though, too, we need lots of faith. And God does help. And so today, pray for not just yourself this morning this Holy Mass, but pray for everyone. Pray for peace in the world. Pray for the people next to you. Pray for family at home. Pray for all the people that have lost their faith.